I was just sitting there messing with my tune a little bit, trying to fix something. But uh, I figured I'd make a video because I haven't in like two weeks or something like that. So I just picked up some more steel here. As you can see, planning on building another flat deck. Um, show you. It's gonna look like this one. Uh, the long. It's gonna be for a long box, Dodge Ram, uh, dually. Or it could be a single rear wheel too if you just cut the fenders off, but it's uh, a little different. The headache rack is like four inch tubing instead of like usually I would do it with two inch tubing. And I, I changed the back just a little bit because I've done a few of them now. So I've, every time I just change it just a little bit and it just turns out a little nicer every time. It fits a little better. So a little bit different even though it looks the same. And then... Yeah, just a nice wood deck and a nice uh, metal plate here and the headache crack. So I'm just about to start building that now. Just right here. And uh, tomorrow my Cadillac here goes in for inspection. And like an out of province inspection. Hopefully it passes, I think. I mean, I, I think I got everything. Should be pretty good. It looks looks like a nice car now and other than like I don't know the rims are just disgusting looking and the body kit's not that great but I'm, I'm trying to find some stock body parts to make it look stock but I got it all cleaned up in here it's looking pretty nice pretty happy with it if you saw in my other video how it looked before like it was pretty bad it's not too bad now I think I still need to get a new bumper for this thing but I'll find one eventually. There's not many of these cars around that people just like part out, so it's kind of hard to find parts. But I'm getting there. So we'll see tomorrow what it needs for inspection. But right now I'm gonna uh, pick up some of this 5 inch channel here, right here, and start cutting it out and building the, the base for my deck here. And then We'll go from there. And just like that, I have the sides of the deck cut out. And I got a... Uh, this is the front one, and the back one, and the sides, and then the corners here. They're just 45s on the back, and then uh, these ones are all like 67.5 degree cuts. Get that single injection tune figured out. It's running pretty decent now. Sounds awesome, too. So it's gonna be like I'm just uh, wanted to make sure I got it in a nice spot that I can work on it easy in my shop because it's hard to move this thing around once you start tacking it together. But I don't think I showed how to how I actually cut these. You just use like one of these digital angle finders here. You can get your angle. Slam it right on there, and then you can cut it out, and then. Uh, Makes it much quicker and easier because you don't gotta figure it out as you go. Well, I got them all up here on stands and tacked it all together. Went together pretty nice and got these uh, metal square tubings coped into there and then so I can put my angle iron on top of here and then the wood sits on top of that. So it's all welded together and supported nice. But, um, yeah, my car went in for inspection today, and it passed, which is pretty sweet. I'm pretty surprised. Usually they get you on something every time, but 
just passed first go, so that's pretty sweet. And uh, got it all cleaned up in here and stuff. You can see here's the path inspection thing. I don't know, it's different every state, every country, everything, but that's what the one in BC looks like. So that's done. Now I can actually start doing some fun stuff to this thing. I think I might chomp the coils right now because they're pretty sweet. It's pretty high. Like, I don't know, it's a bit high for me. And I got, I stretched the tires on a little bit too, so should be able to get them tucked up in there a little bit. So I think I'm going to chop a coil or two out of that thing and see what happens and then maybe weld the diff too. That'd be definitely something I need to do. Looks much better though. Definitely think I gotta get, get the rear a little lower though. Well, I finally found a new bumper for this thing. It's even the same color. Got pretty lucky on that. It has a little bit of damage, like somebody backed into a wall or something or drifted into a wall. And then there's like a little bit of a crack and a bend here, but I can fix that, no problem. It's just a stock bumper. It has dual exhaust, I guess. This piece of crap only has one exhaust. That's okay. It's gonna be way better than that. Uh, I don't even know what I want to call that thing. It's horrible. It makes me want to throw up every single time I look at it. So if anybody wants this, it's yours for free. It's just gonna go in the garbage otherwise. Oh yeah, I'll rip this thing off now and hopefully this one just bolts right on, no problem. Hopefully. Well, I managed to uh, use my heat gun to get that bend out or whatever, or that kink or whatever you want to call it in here. And I, I mean, there's nothing I can do about the crack, but I just reinforced it with a zip tie bit so it doesn't crack anymore and zip tied this guy in too. And then I was able to use the bolts in there. I had to build some, uh, some big kind of spacer things or big washer things for it to work but it's coming together it's getting on there looks way better than the, the other bumper this one here stupid thing still got to do the other side still got to bolt this get this on all bolted up and stuff but this was the good side so it's not an issue looks way better though can't wait to see it on the ground Well, I got it on there. <laughs> it looks kind of funny with these side skirts. I'm still trying to find some factory side skirts to put on. But we're getting there. It looks way better than this one, in my opinion. I don't know. That one was just... Yeah, that is just way too much for me. This looks way better. I still need to lower the rear a little more still. Still got way too much here. Front's more how I'm looking to have it. Nice and a little tighter. But I'm still looking for some side skirts because these side skirts definitely don't go with the stock front and rear bumper. But it's come along getting there eventually. I'm just sitting there and trying to get motivated to do something here. And uh, I wanted to show off my chair that I built here. This is a, uh, a chain, a transfer case chain out of my Cummins. Well, one of them anyways. And I just tacked it onto some steel here and then I made it so it, oh, if I can pull it off, Anyways, 
made it so it sits on my my stand. So got it locked here, but height adjustable. And it's pretty comfortable. And it works good for like if I need to stand on it and get to high places. But I was just looking at my car here and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show it on camera. If you look at this wheel, it's like towed out or in, I don't know, which, whichever way. The back of the wheel is out. And then you come over here. This one's normal, I think. Yeah, I think you can see it on camera. But I think it's just a just an adjustment I can make. I was looking under there. I was just I'm just trying to figure out why it would be like that. Because the the adjustment rod itself is not bent or anything. But and none of the other suspension components I can see are bent. It's just really out of alignment. I don't know. It's a little weird that it'd be like that, but that's okay. We can fix that. Well, you'd be surprised how many people email me and tell me my plans are too expensive to buy and not worth it. Which is bullshit if you ask me because I challenge you to find any other flat deck plans online for cheaper. Or if at all. Because usually most people do not like to give away their plans. But, I mean, stuff like this, this, is, this takes me five minutes. Not even five minutes. I cut this angle and this angle at an exact length that I've already predetermined on my computer and I just put it there and then I cut another one and I put it there and then I already know the angle I'm gonna need here and I already know the distance I'm gonna need here to put it in so total this takes maybe 15-20 minutes not even to get all that stuff in there and completely tacked up cut, welded, everything whereas if you don't have any plans you're figuring it out as you go which is going to take a long time, a lot longer than 5, 10, 15 minutes. So, and you, another thing you got to remember is if you change this angle, even by like one degree, this whole distance is now going to change every, like completely. Like even a couple degrees here equals a couple inches here. And if you're out here, it would equal a lot more. And also at the same time, you change this angle just a tiny bit. And this angle changes a lot because you move the whole piece. So it, a lot of the stuff like that you don't think about until you're actually building it. Um, like for example, if I was to change this two or three degrees, it would change the distance of this, I don't know, for example an inch, which would change the whole rear end of my deck by an inch, and then everything down underneath and everything's gonna be all different. So that's why you gotta keep to a set plan from the start and keep building it. Otherwise, when you've finished, everything will just be completely screwed up and not right. Or, I mean, you can do it, but it's gonna take you a freaking long time without plans, that's for sure. You'll save way more money in time building these decks off my plans than you would save by not buying the plans in the first place. Just something to think about. You see, this is what I mean. If you uh, were building this as you go, there's no way you could get it to fit this well. Like, the only reason it doesn't fit great is because I suck with the zip cut. So, I mean, the angles are spot on. It doesn't get any closer than that. The same with the sides here. It takes no time at all to weld that and grind that or whatever you want to do. There's no guessing. And another thing you get to remember too is if you don't get the angle exactly right on both sides, the it'll be bigger. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Here, I could probably do it with a piece of square tubing I got here. See these two angles? They're similar, but they're not exactly the same. And see if you put them together, then you got about an overhang here, which is fine. You can weld it and stuff like that. But as you get to bigger angles, it gets worse and worse to the point where you can't do that because it'll just look horrible, and you can't weld that. 
just another reason you need the plans because it just makes it so much easier. The angles are exact, exact, and not to mention the length is exact. There's no gap or anything like that. It just saves so much time and effort and just headaches. It's just, I don't know. I don't know how to stress it enough. It makes building these decks enjoyable rather than like a job. So I got a little more done here. Got this uh, big piece of plate cut out and put in there. Just tacked right now. And uh, I, I usually don't weld the whole rear piece until it's all completely finished. Because, I don't know, I guess if you don't weld much you wouldn't really know this, but for example, see how there's a slight amount of gap here? Like I did that on purpose, obviously, but let's say the gap was a quarter inch and then you put a tack right here it'll shrink probably like a sixteenth or an eighth even. Every single time you do a tack, it always pulls stuff together, or if you, for example, weld this, that's why this is welded here, because it was sagged down a little bit, but then if you come here and you put a lot of heat in, and you weld this right here, it the metal contracts together, and the whole rear part will move, and it'll change your whole level. So. I figure that's a pretty good tip to throw in there. If you're, when you're tacking something up, like even stuff like this, if you have it exactly level and you throw a tack here, it's gonna like open up a bit and you'll have to bring it back down to tack it here. But if you bring it back down first, all the way to exactly level and then tack it, it's gonna pull over what you want and it won't be level. So it's another thing to think about when you're welding is uh, anytime you put heat into something, it's gonna it's gonna pull towards that heat. So, like for example, this gap here. I made this gap huge when I put it in here because I've had this problem before where it fits perfectly. But then once you start tacking it, you get along and the gap just closes up, closes up, closes up, and you get to the end and it just doesn't even fit. And you gotta like try to zip cut in there and open it up, or it's it's a pain in the ass. So yeah, just remember that if you ever tack something it's gonna close up or it's gonna move out of level and stuff like that. I, just, I don't know how many people really know that because I don't know, if you don't really well, how would you really know that? I've been doing, uh, I've been spending a lot of time on my 12 valve tune lately and it's, it's, I'm starting to get it really like it's nice now. I run it 100% of the time now over like uh, having pilot ejection. It sounds awesome. I get better fuel economy. I don't, I'm not sure how you how you can hear it in the camera, but it sounds awesome. Trust me. 